Hi, I'm Jonathan from Martin Lynch and & Sons and today we're going to have a look at the brand new Anytone ATD878 UV2+. We're going to have a look at how it differs from the ATD878 and the 868. We'll also have a look at the unboxing experience and a software tutorial as well. If you want to skip ahead to any of those sections, you can look at the chapters below the video. So first we're going to do an unboxing of the uh, new ATD878 UV2+. Plus. I'm going to move uh, the uh, older two off to the side. I'm going to move the our demonstrator out and we'll have a look at what comes inside the box. So uh, standard rectangle box as we're quite familiar with any tone with a new design on it. A nice big picture of the, um, the radio as well. Inside the box we find uh, obviously the uh, the Anytone stickers, the manual, and also there is a sheet about the uh, Bluetooth user guide as well. Of course, one of the new features, we'll go over it in a minute, is about uh, Bluetooth. So there we see the radio on top uh, and uh, you can uh, easily just get that out. There we go. So that's the radio itself. And underneath we also have uh, a programming cable. We have a uh, strap and uh, Velcro strip. Uh, we also have the charger, the Bluetooth PTT button, uh, plug in the wall adapter, a belt clip, and also uh, antenna as well. All in the box, everything you need. Oh, almost forgot. Most crucially, of course, the battery as well. Battery comes in that little compartment there. Uh, so everything you need to get going comes with the radio uh, and you don't necessarily need to buy anything else. If, but of course, there are options if you want to. We'll cover some of those a little bit later on. So as you can see, quite a simple unboxing experience. So let's talk about the, the new features of the ATD878 UV2 Plus and how it compares primarily to the ATD878. So this is the, the Anytone lineup now. So we've got the, the entry level, if you want to call it that, uh, ATD868. We've still got the ATD878 uh, Plus, as well as the ATD878 Non Plus 2, and now the brand new ATD878 UV2 Plus. So this is the, the entire range. So as you may be aware, they are all VHF, UHF, dual mode radio, so FM and DMR. In the case of the ATD868 uh, and the ATD878, both the standard and plus versions, uh, they both hold about 200,000 contacts, 10,000 talk groups, um, and both have GPS on board. The ATD868 does digital APRS, whereas the ATD878 and ATD878 UV Plus both do analog APRS on transmit. Moving over to the, the new uh, ATD878 UV2 Plus, things get quite confusing, don't they? This has all the features of the previous ATD878, but adds an increased capacity for up to 500,000 contacts, still retains 10,000 talk groups, uh, and also has enormous, I think it's 500 hours of uh, recording time on it as well. But the main features uh, is of course Bluetooth, and now APRS on receive. So you can do analog APRS uh, AX25 packets on receive as well as transmit. And if you want to call this a feature, the, uh, the button on the top has gone from uh, blue on the previous version to green on the new version. So that's the main differences of the new radio. And now we'll have a quick look into the software to see what changes there are there. So we've jumped forward a couple of weeks. I've had a shave and have cut my hair and Anytone have released some new software and uh, a new firmware for the radio. So we're gonna hop into that now. Uh, the new software has added a couple of buttons which aid the use of it and make it a little bit nice to use. So what we're gonna show you first off is the software and it looks very much like uh, any other Anytone piece of software. So if you've used a previous generation, uh, 878 or the 868 uh, or the 578 mobile, it looks exactly the same. And you can also um, import from a, uh, a previous version. So if you've got, say, an eight, uh, the old 878 maybe, uh, you can export from that software uh, as to CSV files and import into this software. It is just worth, worth noting that you can't directly open a previous code plug in the new software just worth noting. Um, but the one thing I want to show you today is about how to set up APRS receive, because obviously that's one of the new big features of the, the new radio. So we're going to hop into the channels and I've um, got a blank channel up at the top here. So I'm going to 
uh, give this channel name, let's say APRS144800. That seems like good to me. Um, we're gonna put the receive frequency in there as 144800, which is the frequency we use uh, here in Europe for APRS. Um, if you're in the States, you probably want to set that to 144.39. Um, well, that's fine. We're gonna put the channel type as analog. We're gonna leave everything else. We're gonna leave it on high power. We're gonna leave it as uh, 12 and a half K bandwidth. Um, the next thing we need to do, if we want to transmit APRS while we're on here, uh, we can just select APRS report type, make that analog. And uh, if you want to set up a PTT mode, you can do. Personally, I always tend to leave it as end of transmission. Um, that's just what I tend to do. Now down here, we're just gonna make sure everything's fine down here in, in analog and everything's fine. We don't need to change anything down here. If you wanted to encode CTCSS along with your APRS, um, you can do so, but we're not gonna bother here. One thing we are gonna do is in the top right hand corner up here, we've got APRS RX, so we're gonna check that. And the latest version of the uh, software has added this one, which is analog APRS mute. We're also going to enable that as well. So what that does is that other, without checking that, you would hear all of the APRS packets, which is fine if you want to hear the APRS packets, and if you do, leave that unchecked. Personally, I don't necessarily want to hear the packets coming through, I just want to see the information on the screen. So I'm going to click that, and we're going to leave that muted, and then click OK. So that's now in the software, we can see it in the channel. The only thing we need to do now is add it to a zone. So I'm just going to go to the zone, I'm going to create a new zone here, I'm going to call it APRS and there's the channel we just created. I'm gonna pull that across. There we go, APRS 144.800, click OK. And the last thing to do is to make sure that I'm on the correct COM port for the radio, which I am, and then write that data to the radio. Uh, I'm only gonna do the other data. If you've also taken this opportunity to update your digital contact list, and don't forget you can download the full uh, CSV file from radioid.net. Um, if you've done that, then you might wanna do that as well. I'm just going to do other data and that will put it into the radio. Now we've uploaded the code plug back into the radio. Uh, the radio is all set in order to do uh, APRS receive. So I'm just going to come around here and, and pull up this uh, here. Um, and we, as we can see on the, the screen, we can uh, go through there. And actually on the bottom, we've already got it there. APRS 144.800. So that means I can leave it in the sub there, just on, on, the, on the sub receive as it were. Uh, and any APRS packets that come through uh, will um, uh, be decoded. If you want to see previous APRS packets that you've been decoded, we can go menu, we can scroll down to APRS, uh, we can go down to analog APRS info, analog APRS info again, and there we go, we can see all of these stations that my radio has heard and decoded, and if we just select one at random, uh, we can see the information about that packet. So we can see when it was, we can see the time, also obviously the call sign. And if I had a GPS signal as well, it would also show me the distance in miles uh, and a direction as well. Uh, in here, I don't have um, a GPS signal, so that functionality doesn't work, but I can assure you that out in the car or when, when you're out walking, um, it does work. Um, so that's the software, that's the radio. Um, I hope that's of use and we'll hop back to me in the past. So now we've had a look over the software and we've now learned how to set the APRS up because I think that's going to be something that um, well, caught me out of how to do it. Uh, let's have a quick look at some of the accessories we have available for uh, the new radio. In fact, these also work with the older radios too. Uh, the first one you can see actually mounted on the radio is the Nagoya NA701. I'm just going to take it off here. So we have the uh, the Nagoya NA701 available both uh, with a male and a female SMA on the bottom of it. Of course it's a female SMA for the uh, for the Anytones but the male, ra male version if you wanted it on a say one of the Aces or Kenwoods or Icon radios. Uh, but it's quite nice with the the Anytone because it fits on and it almost looks as if it would be a, a direct replacement for the original in terms of how it fits. So that's uh, available uh, and I have to say a, a Massive improvement over the, the standard stock antenna that is supplied with the radio. Uh, also available, of course, the, the new radio has Bluetooth on. So if you've got uh, one of the new radios or you've got the ATD878 UV Plus, that's the previous version, um, then we also have available uh, a Bluetooth headset, which is very nice and it does exactly what it says on the tin. Of course, you can also pair it potentially with your car's uh, Bluetooth system, although your mileage may vary with how well that works. Different reports from different car manufacturers as to how well it works, but uh, 
the headset, nice, very simple, nice big battery in there, charges via a, a standard micro USB connector, and you've got audio on the side as well. Use that in conjunction with the uh, Bluetooth PTT that comes in the box, and you can get yourself hands-free very easily. You can strap that, uh, that Bluetooth PTT button onto maybe your steering wheel, uh, or maybe a gear stick if you wanted to use it in the car. Uh, and also uh, we have the battery eliminator. So again, if you wanted to use this in the car, uh, you could very easily just clip that onto the back of the uh, radio. Obviously plug that into your cigarette lighter socket and you can easily power the radio whilst mobile without using any battery at all. Uh, I have to say though, the battery does last a heck of a long time on the, uh, on the radios. Any tone have been quite renowned for their battery life. Uh, so you might, probably get a good day's or day and a half's use out of the radio uh, without having to recharge at all. But we also have available from stock uh, spare batteries as well. Well, there we have it. That's the, the new Anytone ATD 878UV2+. Plus. I have to say, I'll be making the upgrade from my uh, 878, uh, if only for the uh, added capability of that, that huge 500,000 contacts with the uh, DMR network now approaching 200,000. It's not gonna be long before these two can't keep the entire database. Of course, with 500,000 contacts on the new radio, it's gonna be a long time before we surpass that figure. Uh, so they are available from stock now. Uh, if you're watching this when the video goes out, of course, check the website for the current stock if you're watching this uh, far in the future. But as of time recording, uh, we've had our, our delivery and they are available from stock. And uh, what do you think? Do you think it's worth the upgrade? Maybe pop it in the comments below. And of course, you can always get it online, hamradio.co.uk or give us a call 0345 2300 599. Until next time, bye-bye.